Indicade? Indicade. Indicate? Indicate? Indicate. Yeah, no. Indicate. Indicate. Yeah. But indicate. What about Indicate? It's Indicate. Oh. 2016, guys. Indicate was awesome. Catch out the recap here. It's episode 108 of Indie Game Riot from Indicate. <laughs> Hey everybody, this is Josh. I'm here with Rev, and uh, that's tech as if he were an old crazy man, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> He's not here, uh, not actually really sure what he's doing, but uh, at the time of this recording, we're not doing it on our normal day, so we weren't sure if he was going to be able to show up, uh, and, you know, with uh, Tech's amazing communication skills, uh, <laughs> we found, we, you know, are assuming that he's not showing up. So, uh, we had to push it from yesterday because uh, Rev got stuck at work, but um, we couldn't normally, you know, normally when that happens... Tech and I will will take over um, for the show and, and move on like we're doing now without Tech. But Rev's the only one I went to Indiecade, and that's what this show is going to be centralized on, at least during the new segment about the Indiecade recap. So, kind of need him for this one. So we're doing yep. it. We, we postpone it to to you know we usually do it on Friday nights and we postpone it on Saturday. That's the explanation for that. Anyway, how's your week? Uh, it's been long. It, it's been long. Like I said, in between uh, in between segments, uh, I have worked approximately three months in the last month and a half. Um, had uh, like I've easily been pegging eighty hours a week, uh, every week, for that entire period of time. Uh, I got sick the day before Indiecade, uh, and then. Went to Indicate while sick, and that was fun. And then got back and was still sick. Took an extra day off, visited with a family member, and uh, yeah, just work, 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 work. I love tonight's going mobile game. And oh, I, th I thought you might. What else? <laughs> yeah. I have, well, you should be excited about um, the first one too. By the way, that's your uh, that's your boy from Puba. Yeah. Yeah, concursion and webinographist. But we'll get into that. Later. Oh yeah. So anyway, uh, my week, uh, mostly family stuff. To be honest, I got my kids' Halloween costumes. Um, mm -hmm. They originally wanted to be Pokemon, but it's hard to find a reasonably pri reasonably priced Pokemon costume. Like you have to go to like a specialty store usually. I found right. I found one at Walmart, but it was like it was too big and it was like thirty bucks and it was just yeah. Um, <sighs> So, but they went with, I should say they, I, they, my daughter, went with her second pick, which is Batman or, and or Batgirl in this case, because she picked the one with the dress, obviously. Um, mm -hmm. And so my son, who doesn't really pick, we, he's going to be Batman. So they're going as Batman and Batgirl for all Halloween. All right. Yeah. Um, and, uh. Not that anyone cares. I finally got it, my first set of my own polyhedral dice today. I found this really cool uh, store in the mall because we went to go see some cheap movies today. Uh -huh. And uh, we were walking around before the movie started. <clears throat> and uh, I was in another store and they told me that the, the one of the workers there told me about the store that had just opened up because it's been a while since we've been to this mall. And it's really, it's actually like from the front, if you just walk by, it looks like a skate shop because they have a bunch of skate clothes and there's like skateboards that they're selling on the wall. But in the back, like the back half of the, of the store is like a gaming, it's like a game store. Like a, they have like D&D &D and magic and all that sort of stuff. And it's really cool. And I, I was thinking to myself, if I had one, if I had money, I would buy that fucking, I would, they would be selling out to me. <laughs> but um, if we were doing the uh, tabletop version, of uh, Indie Game Riot, man, that would be like my go-to place. I'm very happy because there's not like any really real game stores around here anymore. So that's exciting to mm -hmm. me. 
So that's what everyone cares about, of course, listening to this show. Um, right. So, but unfortunately, now we're going to have to go on to, you know, the indie games. Uh, Did we know, speaking of, before we do, yeah. do we know if Tech won an award for Wizard Problems? Um, I do not know. Okay. I feel like if he did, he would have been like, guys, guys, I won an award. <laughs> yeah. Possibly. Uh, okay. Well, I just so thought it I would assume no. Uh, okay. Lest he be, lest he be uh, bragging about it. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, any news injection time. Are you bored with the same old games? Yeah. Why, then give yourself an indie news injection. Thanks, indie games. Cha-cha! Indiecade was amazing. Uh, that's all I gotta say. Have a good night. That's it. All right, Bye, show's over. Indiecade. Bye. Bye. Uh, no, seriously though, uh, Indiecade was uh, a their logo this year. Pretty fucking awesome. I really like oh, it. Oh, they changed it. It's like a little yeah. paint splatter. Yeah, it was really kind of cool. Uh, um, October thirteenth through the sixteenth at the uh, University of Southern California. Um, Berkeley? Say again? Berkeley? No. Isn't that the main campus for USC? Berkeley is, yeah, maybe. That's what, yeah, that's what I said. Yeah, but we weren't at Berkeley. We were in L.A. Well, then no one cares. <laughs> oh, well, okay. Uh, so, uh, schedule-wise, Friday did not work out so well. Like I said, I was kind of sick uh, the day before. Like, I developed a sore throat, fever, uh, headaches, aches and pains, running nose, sinus pressure, all of that fun stuff. I started feeling better, drove my happy ass up there, uh, you know, made sure I got a full meal in, picked up our badges. Uh, fuck, I left my badge in my you, car, so I can't show you that. At least you got that. the con plague before the con. Right. After. Exactly. Um, part of the part of the frustration for why I was so late getting up there Friday was because uh, as as you guys know I've recently uh, separated from my my spouses and moved and I had uh, several boxes of um, you know business cards ready to go and I was like yep I know right where they are uh, apparently the actual business cards have disappeared somewhere I can't find them anymore. They're being used as coasters. Probably. So instead of having instead of having like, you know, this really cool like, hey, this is indie game ride business card. Oh, you got looks, new ones? Well, that's the that that's what I used last year and was going to use again this year. Um, except all I could find was the ones that I had from two years ago. <laughs> With the old ass logo. Oh my god. With the old ass logo <laughs> and like a bitly link on it and <laughs> still have the gmail address and i felt really really bad but um i swear guys i swear we're professionals I swear. we are uh binary actually uh came up with me as my assistant and she is so useful uh in that regard she, she covered out the the gmail and the bitly link and then on the back wrote you know my email address and our website um and, and did that every time we stopped to sit down somewhere. So some dev would be like, oh, hey, I totally ran out of business cards. Let me write it down on this scrap of paper. And I'm like, hey, I totally lost my business card. So here's a different scrap of paper with my <laughs> info on it. What you can read on the front is accurate, and what you can read on the back is accurate. Um, so that was kind of funny. Uh, but that was a very common common thing throughout the uh, throughout the weekend. Um, what else was there? Uh, parking was atrocious. It was twelve dollars a day. Jesus. Uh, yeah, uh, but uh, we decided, fuck it, we're gonna just park and Uber. Uh, park at our hotel and Uber. Um, was Uber cheaper? Uh, Uber was technically cheaper. No. Well, yes, if it wasn't for all of the trips that we took. Um, so would it have been better to park for the day? I, it would have been financially, but I didn't care because my company was, my company credit card is what's tied to my Uber account, oh. so I I don't pay for Uber. <laughs> well, that works. <laughs> um, we need. A so yeah, there was. Card. Say again. We need a company credit card. <laughs> right. Uh, we would need to have a company at first, though. Like I we think would also a, need funds to pay off said credit card. 
Yeah, that would be a big part of it as well. Uh, so let's get into some of what IndieCade was. IndieCade had a slew of games, like yeah, like all those on the white page. Like all those are games. And you visited every things. single one of them. Correct? I visited the vast majority of them. Uh, it sucked because this year there was a huge, a huge amount of VR. And because I, I was still sick, I didn't want, like, A, the pressure of the VR headset sitting on my sinuses and nose. And also, like, you, apparently some people kind of forget that you can pass germs that way. So a lot of the people were not, uh, didn't have, like, sanitizing wipes. Uh, and I figured it would I would much rather take the hit and not experience the VR this year than have some poor dev get blamed for getting like that's fine. I, think, I think at this point VR is still not to the point where it's worth 100% worth covering that, that uh, diligently I think this year it was like some of the best games that I saw this year were VR I, I, well, you're ahead of it on me then, because everything I've seen is still like old Unity, you know, like the stuff you find on uh, Game Jolt and stuff like that. Mm. No, this one was, uh, this one was, was, was different. Um, yeah, there was, there was a lot of really cool stuff. So, uh, different setups. Let's see, what did we have? Intel was one of the sponsors. Nintendo was, uh, was very studiously, uh, absent. Um, Weird. Yeah. Uh, they were all up in Indicate's business uh, last time. Last year. Yeah, yeah no, they, they really were. But this year it was PlayStation and Intel. Nintendo was uh, conspicuously gone. But uh, they were an Indicate sponsor, and they gave us a little thing of royal blue and plain kettle corn. Uh, it's non-GMO popcorn. That's Just... Yeah. Random. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we got a... Uh, let's see what else do we do. Oh, um, we got a little tote bag dealio. Uh, this was this was this year's Intel th- sponsored theme, gaming for everyone. But uh, you talk to five devs in the Intel section, the gaming for everyone section, and have them sign a little piece of paper, and they'd give you one of these. Um, hmm. And I was like, oh, only talk to five. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Um, there wasn't enough room for all the names. <laughs> yeah. Um, but uh, let's see, what did we got? Uh, so got a really cool pin out of that one as well. That one was fun. We've got uh, Art Club Challenge. This was one of the... Uh, a, this was the first dev that I spoke to that recognized us for our work as Indie Game Riot. Nice. Um, and his game was a really cool idea. So basically you have this, uh, this mobily accessible game and you get uh, certain tools. Like, like, like you get like four color palette. Black, red, yellow, blue. Right? And then you can make squares and uh, I think some circles. I, I don't recall, but I, I, I recall squares for certain. And then you give, you're give you given a challenge. Make a, make a sunset. Or make a bluebird. Or, you know, make the Mona Lisa, whatever. And you do that with your limited palette of, of tools. And then it gets uploaded to a picture frame as though that's hung as though it was in a museum. And you can see how other people's stuff was, you know, so, like... So it's not the type of game where there's, like, I'm a winner. It's more like, hey... No, it's a, it's a... We're creating art. It's a show... It's a, sh- like, show yeah. your work game. Okay. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, let's see. Who else did we have? Really... Some really cool stuff out there. Uh, we Are Chicago. Um, uh, they did a fairly fantastic, I would say... Uh, personalization of stories from Chicago um, and they're hobbled by their decision to use uh, realistic graphics but they're making improvements and are nearing release Uh, that was a really cool this was their cool uh, what else do we have? Who else do we have? Da, da, da. Able Gamers was present. Um, my new favorite charity, the Able Gamers charity. Uh, they partner with manufacturers. And uh, I saw 
I don't know if it was there doing or not, but I saw like Xbox One uh, is making uh, disabled. Like I can't think of the words to use, but like controllers that are be able to use by like people with disabilities. Mm. I could I could see that. I mean, they are a re- fairly large like like built uh, into the controller. Yeah. I wonder if we can get someone from there on the show. Probably. I've got their card. Uh, let's see. Let me start sifting through some of our contacts. Uh, there's a really cool uh, pixel like ASCII style. Uh, game that uh, is coming out. It's uh, Stone Story. Um, really a lot of fun. Uh, let's see. Open Sorcery was a text-based kind of point and click, but that one was also interesting in that you were merging technology and magic. Uh, that one was uh, was also a lot of fun. Uh, you know the Kingdom of Loathing? Hmm. No, you've never heard of Kingdom of Loathing, the the stick figure. I don't I don't remember. Were they a web comic first? I don't follow too many web comics. No, they were the game Kingdom of Loathing, um, it, and it was the um, web the the browser based game where it's an RPG. Well, they're doing the West of Loathing uh, in the same style. And it is. Oh a, wait! A, oh 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 oh! I think I know. I think I know. Okay. Yeah. I, I you, feel like we mentioned that. Some a, point. Yeah, we might have in the in the past as as one of those one of those things. Uh, let's see. What else do we get? What else do we get? Da, 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 Jared Huntley. I don't remember. I apologize. I'll be reaching out to you. Uh, Luna is a really cool VR experience. It's a tactile, creative puzzle game uh, coming out to Steam for PC and VR. So they're doing it in both methods. Um, they, uh, it, they're part of their team was the director for the uh, Katamari games. So we so should it, expect it to be weird as shit? It's weird as shit. <laughs> it definitely is. Uh, Oculus and Vive was Kismet, and I didn't get a chance to play that one. Talked about that one. Shackle was a really cool concept. Uh, it was a VR multiplayer game. Um, there were two people that are sitting back to back. You got your VR headset on. You got headphones with a microphone in, and there is a monster in the room. You're trying to uh, escape the room, but you can't see what your partner sees. So you're relying on your communication. It's dark, and and they're gonna try and kill you. Uh, and I apologize, guys. That uh, when I go forward to see it in Skype, apparently that makes it way too large to see on the stream. Um, but, uh, yeah, much like, you know, uh, what is it, Five Nights at Freddy's or in similar type games, you have limited resources uh, and, and limited, you know, actions that you can take between uh, before the monster comes out. I was interviewing one of the developers for it. I was kind of talking to him, and uh, Binary shrieked. Like, it was just like one of those, like, ah! And it was <laughs> hilarious. And I was like, oh, I assume the game's over? And, and the dev was like, yep. Nobody threw a, a headset this time, so that's good. <laughs> um, let's see. Brandon, I don't recall. Jennifer, why did I have your card? I don't know. Sorry, I'm just kind of sifting through some of these for, for reminders. Um Turbo Button is an indie VR game studio. Oh, yeah, they did the elevator puzzle game. Sorry, just, uh, what else do we have? Some of my favorite games, uh, much like, uh, you know how IndieCade's, IndieCade focuses more on game as an experience, game as a, uh, event, as opposed to game as in, let's sit down and we have a very straightforward video game. Uh, I have had one of the most interesting game slash theater experiences of my life uh it was the shadiest looking thing involved like so there's a white van sitting outside the uh the studio 
and uh, you know, I'm talking like a pedo van. I was gonna say, did they offer you candy? Free candy painted on the side, you know, in spray paint. That that kind of. Of course, you were like, yeah, I want candy. Um, yeah, it was that kind of van, and it like definitely looked shady. But uh, they were doing the story of Hamlet in 15 minute segments for three people in a van. And so, like, each each person, that e- each participant, each player, as it were, uh, drew a character for the next scene and then was with that character in the van. And, and everybody had a different experience based on which character they were on. Uh, I did not have Ophelia or Hamlet. Uh, I had, I can't remember the character's name this many times I should remember, but it was yeah. something... Felonius. I had Felonius. And, um, like, like, we're sitting in the front of the van, and, like, on the horn it says to honk or not to honk. Yeah, I didn't honk. Um, and, like, he's reading, he's reading Shakespeare for parents or something like or parenting by Shakespeare. And, uh, then, you know, we get into this conversation about do you have kids and whether or not, and he's relaying Sophia's experience with Hamlet and blah, blah, blah. And, and we're walking around the van and everybody's doing things in just such a way that nobody's interacting until the very end. And it was, it was a really, really trippy, weird experience. I, I thoroughly enjoyed that. Would was not, that, uh, was that a night game? No, that was just one of the day, day things that was going on. Weird. Um, Let's see, what else do we have? Oh, my favorite game, my favorite, favorite, favorite game out of the entire, uh, out of the entire weekend, uh, Foresighted Fantasy. Um, their website, foresightedfantasy.com, is in four sides, square, right? Um, they are, it's a, it's a puzzle platformer that, you know how, I'd like, you know how when you played Pac-Man and you went off the left, you came on the right? Mm-hmm. Think that, but you control when that effect can take place on any four sides by locking it into place. And then you have to solve puzzles like, okay, so I need to get over here, which means I really have to jump over this way, which will launch me up from the bottom right, and I'll land there, and then I have to jump back to the left, and that'll give me... Yeah. Um, it was really fun, really cool puzzle. Uh, there's some story behind it that I'm not aware of because they're still working on it, as I recall. All? No, they're out, aren't they? Let me double check that. I'm sorry, guys. Uh, that reminds me of the mechanic from um, Abduction, I think it was called, which is that game that recently came out from one of the other creators of Myst. Because mm-hmm. they had that mechanic where you had to figure out how to get to certain places by going through the wall on the yeah. other side. No, it's very, very similar to that. No, they are... Yeah, they're out. Nine ninety nine on Steam. Uh, it was. It's a lot of fun. I'm going to, uh, after payday, potentially buy it. Unless somebody wants to buy it for me, uh, that would be cool. Um, so yeah, that one was a that one was a lot a lot of fun. I really liked that. Uh, spoke with the uh, the dev and their publisher. That was um, that was well done there. Uh, what else did we have? Honor code. Was the studio, as I recall? Um, do, 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 do. In fact, hold on. I can do me one better right here. List of games. I have this giant list of games in front of me, and I'm like sifting through people's cards. <laughs> right? Uh, let's see. Uh, 1979 Revolution Black Friday. Absolutely great game. Uh, looked absolutely beautiful. Uh, what did we have? Fracture was good. 10 second reviews, my Rev. Right? No, it really is. Um, Octobo was a really cool plushy tablet thing for kids. Like, you could tell stories and it would read off the camera with the tablet and react. You could give it a hug. You know, it was kind of adorable. I, I really want one. <laughs> uh, Hyper Light Drifter was present. Uh, let's see. Shackle, I told you about. Order of the Oven Mitt. Ed- edible game. Like, the board game, the pieces, everything was edible, and, like, you had your favorite pieces that you were wanting to get to, but you could block your opponent and eat their pieces instead, but that means you couldn't eat your pieces, and, like, oh, it was really kind of cool. Um, Threadsteading was another awesome concept game. They took a brother 
um, uh, the word I'm looking for, embroidery machine. And they pre-printed out, pre-printed out a map onto some fabric and uh, starts here and then like they they built a custom controller that got stuck into the the sewing machine and tied to a raspberry pi and there's a camera and you you as the player from the start you know it's a little hex map like a dnd type map and you have so much energy per turn to go so many squares and whether you're going through forest or crossing water or whatever determines how much energy that square takes and each one has a different point value. So, so games, yeah. games like that, and like the food one, and mm-hmm. a lot of the stuff. Are they trying to get these games out for like mass consumption? Because I feel like these are like, like not very many people have Raspberry Pis, for instance. Yeah, right? there's only 27 million of them. Okay. That been that, okay. How many? How many gamers do you think <laughs> will will use a Raspberry Pi for this? Is what I'm saying. Who knows? Like, it's not but, like. But, but but here's the difference. Here, here here's the difference, and I think and I think if you went, I I, I think that if you experienced Indiecade, you would understand. Indiecade doesn't care about whether or not you're commercially viable. Well, Indiecade. I, I, that's like, not what like, I'm saying. Like the, the people there. What I'm asking is like, like the devs themselves. Like I know are they, are they exploring are they exploring new possibilities and new yeah, is technologies this, and is this or, purely or, experimental or you know for the just the hell of it or are they like legitimately trying to say hey this you should put this in your home and you know like they're expecting people to buy it and I'm not saying that's bad or, like it sounds awesome but right. like the whole thing the whole setup like a Raspberry Pi with with uh, you know hex grid and, and an embroidery embroidery machine. Uh, mm-hmm. Is just like you know, not very many people. Like if if they were trying to push it for mass consumption, no, not very many people would do that. The the vast majority, like like, I, and again, I I don't know. Maybe this is maybe this is just one of those weird perspective things. The vast majority of people that present at Indiecade aren't doing it for the commercialization aspect. Like like. Yes, most of these are going to like a lot of these are games. For example, you know, Foresighted Fantasy is is available on Steam. Hyperlight Drifter was present. A lot of the VR games are going to be able to be purchased, etc. But they're not doing right. Like this is the, the, this is part of the draw for indie games as opposed to the AAA scene. They're making a game because they want to. They're making the experience. They're te- they're testing out new technologies. They're seeing can I do something off the wall that is still fun and engaging. Right, and that's and that's why I'm asking. It's just like like they're not going into it expecting to sell copies of this no, to someone. No, right? <laughs> like well, and even if they are, who cares? I mean, because well, they care if they're if they are expecting to. Well, no, no, no. Like, why is that a bad thing? It's or, not a bad wise. thing. It's not a bad thing for anyone except for them if they're expecting to sell copies of it. If they're if it's just for the hell of it, I totally get that. And that's why I was asking if it was that or if they were really legitimately trying to sell copies of that because like from a business standpoint, it's just not going to work. Or it will work to meet their goals, maybe not by your definition of work, but if, you know, I I I don't really From an really artistic see standpoint, sure. I I don't I, I guess I just don't really see why the where where the uh, where the sudden focus on commercial viability. Is. I'm inducing conversation. Gotcha. Okay. No, no, no. That, fair, fair play. I'm, I'm just that, that's not something I normally uh, attract or, or or see coming out of the independent scene. Like everybody makes games, and sure, it'd be nice if. They did make money out of it, but they're making games to make the games, to make the experience, to have people share in that emotional connection, right. not necessarily to make millions of dollars. Right, which answers my question ten that it's right. not for selling copies, it's for... Right. It could be. It, it could be, but nobody nobody makes art. Nobody makes art to sell art, outside of what's-his-name, Hans Christian Anderson or whatever the, the, the painter... What? The, the the who who's that who's the really shitty painter that does like the quasi fantasy? Um, uh, hold on, what? quasi fantasy. Uh, 
Christian Hans Anderson. Christian Anderson is a musician, I think. Uh, really famous, famous. Uh, no, Warhol doesn't do fantasy. He does pop do pop art. Like Warhol did the uh, like the Campbell's tomato soup cans, and he does a lot of stuff like for like with with brands in it and American. Kincaid, that's who it was. Thomas Kincaid. Okay. So, so like outside of Thomas Kincaid, nobody just like does art to sell it, right? Like art is uh, mo- most people do art to create art. Um, you know, and, and and get people to experience something in there as well. Um, and a lot of these games were very similar to that. Ultra World Exodus, for example, uh, this was this business card. Um, every single one of them is individualized. Uh, it's an actual screenshot taken at some point in the game. It's very, you know, you can apply different filters to it. You can apply... Uh, all sorts of stuff, and and even go wireframe to see how the level was built, and oh, it was it was That's really cool. fun experience. Uh, let's see, what else did we have? Oh, the Media Choice uh, Award winner was the "You Must Be 18 or Older to Enter." It was by far the most entertaining horror game that had absolutely nothing to do with horror. What's the called again? Uh, you must be 18 or older to enter and the whole game is based on the premise that you as the player sitting in front of the computer is uh, actually a early teen or prepubescent teen and the in the late 90s uh or mid to mid 90s to early 2000s and you're trying to get pornography on the internet <laughs> so there's AOL and there's ads and it's it, it's very abstracted. I mean, like part of it that like kind of no, reminds me of uh, Welcome to the Game, but a less fucked up version. Yeah, I could see that. You know I that game? That. Yeah. yeah, Welcome to the Game. If I remember correctly, huh? that's one where you're trying to find the red room. Like you go on a deep web and it's like you got to. Yeah. To yeah. It's it's like yeah. it sounds like a, a less fucked up version of that. Like there was there was audio and like the way that they had it set up was was you know conductive to that but you know you're 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 listening you click on the you, you like click on an advert in the game and all of a sudden you're hearing like oh yeah <laughs> give it to me oh yeah but the speakers are like blasting and it was so funny because instantly like everybody I saw do that as soon as they get to that they like start scrambling for the audio <laughs> for for like the volume control and uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> the developer should put it. Like, like a, a bottle of like lotion next to the computer. <laughs> um, let's see what else was there. Uh, night games, I was, I'll, I'll say, were uh, disappointing. I think to me, uh, there was uh, there was a really cool. Uh, it was the how did they? I'm trying to remember. Block party, and it's a cooperative Tetris experience with like 16 players. Um, so like you have your mobile phone and you go to a website and it syncs you in and you join and cool you get up to 16 players and then it gives you certain shapes on the field that you need to build and each each player gets their own uh you know tetris block um and so you're like fighting and scrambling with each other to try and get it in but it's a uh cooperative so all one big score as opposed to you know the normal versus where we we would be trying to block each other out. It was really kind of a lot of fun. Uh, a lot of people apparently don't understand what cooperative means, <laughs> um, which was also entertaining. But when it was good, it was good. And then I found out as we were taking an Uber back to our hotel uh, that uh, you could still sync in on the website even you know, while I was driving. So like, I managed to, I managed to get in several times and was just like, Oh, I'm going to be wild. And like, I'm assuming I was driving somebody crazy. Uh, and they're like number 14, what the hell is wrong with you? Um, <laughs> yeah. So that was, that was a lot of fun. Uh, there were some other games that were kind of, uh, 
overall, like I love I love Indicade. I've loved everything about Indicated, each of the Indicades that I've been to. Uh, this one seemed smaller and it seemed less festival like. Uh, and it didn't really seem like the developers that were present would have a whole lot of opportunity to uh, go and experience other games because it was, you know, like you'd have, you know, the VR selects are upstairs in a building in a room. And then you have like the Intel, you know, games for everyone uh, that's downstairs in that building. And then across the can- the block, and it was literally like a three minute block, were the, you know, nominee games. Right. And they were split into two different rooms. And because every room has a fire code, like they were only bringing people in, like they could only have 25 people in each one of the rooms at any given time. Oh, and sucks. so, yeah, so, like, there was this uh, long line just to be able to get in to, to see the game. Maybe there was an issue on, like, the back end where with the university. or like, well, you can only have these rooms. Okay, yeah, I, I don't know. Like, it, it, for what it was, it did, it did it well. I just think that there was room for improvement. I hope that this is kind of that little lull before Indicate becomes so much better. Um, let's see. Nog is going VR. Uh, that's going to be a cool puzzle little game. Let's see, what else did we have? Bread Quest was entertaining. Uh, Sherlock Holmes and the Internet, I didn't get a chance to play. Space Shipped was entertaining. Did, so, did, I mean, did you get the chance to, like, I mean, I know you were interviewing people, but, like, any uh, particular people that you talked to that were, like, really, uh, like, profound or just really cool to talk to, or did you catch a beer with anyone or something like that? Um, no, because I was sick. I, I was not doing a whole lot of the aftertime socialization. Um, but uh, the guys that made Foresighted Fantasy, I uh, was talking with them for a really long time. Uh, they were one of the three individuals um, that recognized us through IRX. And uh, that was kind of cool. Um yeah, no, it was a, it was a lot, I, and I didn't get a chance. I didn't get a chance to catch a whole lot of panels or anything like that. They didn't have a whole lot. There was like three, but they all happen at the same time at two o'clock in the afternoon, and so it's like you get to pick one, right? right. Um, and then and like like or or they'd run multiples at the same time like uh, Saturday four o'clock you could get you're designing a game for change so you want to be a games writer virtual reality best practices uh, but those are all in three different locations and you know you just get to pick one um, there was uh, there was one slime cat um, was very big into micro games and uh, she was giving a game you called narrative through level design storytelling and the process of trauma and then the first couple minutes of her presentation where this was mislabeled and it got me thinking about gaming in a different way she's talking about intimacy and we don't mean necessarily you know physical intimacy or romantic intimacy but the intimacy of knowledge you know when you wake up and you're not quite coherent and you go and you make coffee like that's intimacy that that's intimacy with the process and how game design can be used to bring that about and you know she was talking like how many people remember you know all of the all of the really cool moments from um the last assassin's creed game so not so intimacy in a way that like uh, some other example might be like uh, a game that gives a different experience to everyone. Uh, and, a game and therefore, that could give, a game that could give every, it could, but or, think, or are you talking more like more, think a, more like think more like when you played Legend of Zelda or uh, when you play. Uh, what, okay, well that's oh, that's right because you were never yeah, mind. Um, <laughs> no, uh, think about uh, what, what Axiom Verge right Mm -hmm. it's a metroidvania and you start to learn as you're playing through and you're going back through the map you're learning the map and you have intimate knowledge of that at that point it's not necessarily the experience or maybe maybe intimate knowledge of like a mechanic exactly so so like five nights at freddy's for instance 
uh, you go in there without really knowing a whole lot. You're like, okay, well, you get the basics, but then you kind of have to get into a pattern in order to 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 beat it. So you have exactly. intimate knowledge of that. Okay. Yeah, no, it's it, it's very much along that 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 line. Um, what was bad news? Oh, bad news was a really cool one as well. That one they did a uh, they actually had a live improv actor. Um, it was a it was about an hour long to play, but you basically somebody uh, somebody in town died, and you need to uh, find out who it was and and all of that. So you're going around. They've got a, a long form improv actor who's playing all of the NPCs in the game, <laughs> and so like you're, you're sitting at a table. And there's a, a curtain separating you. And then, you know, you're like, oh, I go over to the post office. And the actor pulls the curtain aside, and he's now, like, the postmaster. Right. Um, it, it was really kind of a cool concept. Uh, I didn't get a chance to play it because it took an hour per run, and there's a lot of other games that you can see in that hour. Yeah. Um, but I got a, I got to talk to the dev and, and you know, got a, got an interview. A lot of stuff I filmed this year. Um, or at least as much as I could, probably more so than in previous years. And this year, I'm actually going to get it uploaded. <laughs> so uh, let's see, what else did we have? I think that was about it. Do I have any other decent pictures that I can show real quick? Let me see. Here. <laughs> dick pic, dick pic, dick pic. Uh, <laughs> food from the other <laughs> night, dick pic. Dick pic, somebody's sunglasses. Uh, let's pretentious, see. pretentious photo of a sunset with a filter on it. No, I'm not that big of a dick bag. Uh, this is an award ceremony because I was tweet live tweeting the awards. Uh, you didn't get a chance to talk to Rami this this time around. I, I technically I could have. Uh, he was standing outside the men's room. Uh, on our way into the awards ceremony, and uh, hey, Ron, you need me like, to hold that for you? Dove it, yeah, and then he like <laughs> dove into, uh, do- dove into the um, that thing into the restroom. Uh, oh, uh, we saw a game at Too Many Games two years ago. Yeah, and I saw them at oh, Robo Puzzle Smash. Yeah, Robo Puzzle Smash. He was walking around with a backpack hooked up like this, and uh, would just be sitting in line. And people are like, uh, "Is that a is that a game I can play?" And he was like, "Yeah." And he'd like unclip the controllers from his belt and hand it back to him, and uh, start letting them play. It was really kind of a cool concept, and uh, it was really cool seeing him again. And uh, yeah, the awards were awesome. Uh, I'll have a write up on that sometime soon and that was indicate all right that was indicate any questions was uh was there a riot uh there wasn't but we could definitely start one we should definitely start the riot huh? this week on starting the riot we have a uh, a, a long time uh i guess you could say friend of the show, I mean, he's only, he's been on the show once, uh, but when I, I I'm I'm more saying that we've followed his his development career for a while, a few, <laughs> a few years now since we started. Uh, we saw one of his first games at Indie Three, as a matter of fact, all the way up to this one, which is called the Metronomicon. The Metronomicon uh, is made by Puba, uh, and again, if you go back to our uh, if you go on the website, you could probably find it. Uh, the episode he was on, da- uh, Danny from Puba. Mm-hmm. He um, he created Concursion, which is the one that we saw in Indie 3, and you were like in love with, Rev. Yep. Um, I still have it installed, and I play it on occasion. Well, excuse the weird loading thing. Uh, also, the Weaponographist, which is when he came on the show, that's the game he was talking about. And now finally, the Metronomicon, which seems to be... Uh, uh, pretty popular and doing very well uh, with critics and fans all around. Basically, it's a rhythm game, uh, also an RPG. So, an RPG in it, and f- kind of like I don't know, it's not JRPG style where it's like you know Final Fantasy type. It kind of is from the look, from like how they're like lined up against each other. But okay. obviously, it's not turn based since it's all real time with 
the dancing. So if you ever played, um, it's like DDR, but you can use it with your uh, with the arrow keys. Did you ever play yes. that? Uh, it's kind of like that. And each of your characters that you have uh, on screen right now, you can see it's going through like a tutorial. I could probably skip ahead. Hold on. Uh, yeah, let's skip to here. Uh, so you can see right here, you're going up against the enemy. There's tons of enemies. Um, you have four characters out at a time. They each have their own skills. And obviously you have to play, you know, you have to hit the different keys based on the rhythm of the game. Um, each character, they're, they're, the keys that you have to push are based on different like instruments mm. for the song. Um, but you have to switch between them all because they all do different things. So there's like a healer, there's a support, there's a tank, there's the damage, that sort of thing. Right. Um, so you, you don't have to hit the keys for all the characters at the same time. That would be ridiculous. But um, So you switch between them and you only have to deal with that one character. Uh, the other thing that's cool is that they actually have licensed music and from pretty popular bands. Um, Shiny Toy Guns, for instance. Uh, I think heard was, of them? You never heard of Shiny Toy Guns? Nope. Yeah, I heard of them. That was during my emo stage. <laughs> uh, but they, um, they're some pretty popular bands. Uh, so a really good soundtrack and a uh, really unique premise, if you ask me. Yeah, you know, that's something something that I, I can appreciate about, uh, about Puba is that they like to take and blend mechanics in a way that not a whole lot of people do. Um uh, mm-hmm. I, I, and and just kind of explore the game space as you know as, as though you're going through making like a, a DDR or guitar hero RPG. Who would have no, <laughs> never would have thought of that. But it looks like a lot of fun. How how much is it? Uh, if I go on Steam, it is 19.99. There you go, 19.99. Puba the Metronomicon. Um, do you have any other questions for it? Oh, here's something interesting. Fun fact. Um, so apparently, they were trying to do some anti-piracy stuff for the game. So they built in this thing uh, where basically they were going to release their own version. They were going to pirate out their own version of the game. Um, so that way, you know, they could get a jump on it. And in that version, they were putting out uh, a code that as you got farther into the game, all the um, all the text and voiceover turned to fart noises and it just got worse and worse as you go through the game until it's just completely devolved into you know you still there yeah sorry my my, mic muted accidentally i was sitting here laughing and going that is so (laughs) awesome (laughs) uh yeah i just like sound i was like oh i hope i didn't lose him um so yeah, I thought that was really cool, but they ended up not doing it for because if they were to pirate out their game, they'd actually be technically pirating out that licensed music. Right. So they didn't do that. But there is still a uh a code or a cheat of some sort that you can uh put in enable and enable it if you want to. Uh, uh here's here's a really interesting uh looking into this you can use the following controllers for this game uh mouse and keyboard obviously 360 Xbox 1 PS3 PS4 controllers uh the PS3 PS4 Rock Band guitars the Xbox Rock Band guitars <laughs> a custom Metronomicon dance pad plus the vast majority of USB dance pads uh, cool. they haven't tested them all so like you could turn this in legitimately into a uh, a DDR. Right. That's dude. This is so cool. Yeah, uh, I and, like this. And as you can see too, they have a, a leaderboard. You can there's like different quests, side quests, stuff like that, and weapons. You can upgrade and level up that sort of stuff too. So uh, when we say RPG, it's not just some shallow RPG. It's like legit RPG, mixed an actual with, RPG mixed with rhythm yeah. game. So um, I thought this was really cool, and the aesthetic too is good. I mean, it, it's it's kind of cool because you can see from concursion Mm -hmm. to this game the progress of the art yeah because concursion was kind of uh, uh, something to be desired um, compared to a lot of games um, didn't take away from the gameplay, but you know what I mean. Like you could tell. Yeah, it, it, it seemed as uh, the the art was more simplistic. Right, and then the weaponographist uh, was closer to this style, but um, I wouldn't say as refined. And now this one, I I 
really like the art in this a lot. The character models, especially, um, mm-hmm. cool backgrounds and uh, interesting. It's it's tween. It's like tweened animation, but it works really well. Yeah. Um, and if you don't, for those of you out there who don't know what tween is, it's basically um, you start your character's model in one position and then move it to the other end of that position, and the computer fills in the motion between it. If that makes sense. And a lot of times that creates this kind of like puppet look where it's like the joints are on hinges. Um, but in this case, it, it works really well. Is that what it is? Yeah. Oh, that's so cool. I did not know that that that, that was what it was called. Mm-hmm. I like that. Uh, I think the, the – I wonder if they use this software for animation. Probably not, but um, Toon Boom, which is used in a lot of anime, but um, also used for tweening like this, uh, mm-hmm. is pretty popular. And there's a lot of like – uh, Cartoon Network shows that you can tell that have that hingy movement um, that use that that software. So I'm wondering if they use that, but I'm not sure. Either way, it's really cool all around. Um, anything else that you want to know about this game? Mm, I don't know. They do have a uh, deluxe edition for 2518. It's currently 10% off on Steam. Also includes the soundtrack. Um, they do have some DLC already for it. Um, the Chiptune Challenge Pack 1, the Indie Game Challenge Pack 1, and the Chiptune Challenge Pack 2 uh, that are $1.99 each. It uh, looks like three songs, three new challenges, three new awesome pieces of gear for each. Yeah, three amazing songs from some classic indie games, three new challenges, and three new pieces of gear. Hot so, so, yeah, it looks like a really cool idea. Uh, I am going to check it out just looking at some of the images we haven't seen it in the video but the uh shark enemy uh oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> looks awesome yeah they have really cool character designs um so good job pooba hope to yeah. can't wait to see more from you danny and uh dave is the other guy um danny's the one that we talked to uh with that said uh hopefully we'll have good luck at the peep show Please give all your attention to Early Access. And this week on Peep Show, we have Dwaros, an adventure and town builder game. Uh, so first first in thought, first thought, initial impressions, uh, I really like the idea of a exploration puzzle non-violent sim town building game that sounds ridiculously complicated uh it's really not it looks delightfully adorable uh it has a very uh cartoonish uh appeal in the art uh it it, it very much says kid friendly to me um the, and, the non-violence uh, of it actually is what I, I thought of you on that because I know you and a lot of people that you know appreciate mm-hmm. that. And it's it's cool that they um, stick to uh, their quests are, are all about puzzles and, and then building your, your town, obviously. Uh, again, right. we're, we're talking about cool uh, mashups of, of different genres um, and mechanics and things like that. So... Um, it's cool that doing a doing a sim style yeah. city builder that's also an RPG adventure game the puzzle platformer right, right. like <laughs> um, made by Lithic Games uh, they have been working on it for several years now and have gotten to this point and are running into a couple of little snags uh, specifically that uh, they want to uh, get a proper soundtrack uh, made for it. And, um, you know, they'll have a, a, a few other things that they need to work on for it. But the real purpose behind the entire thing was to um, get a composer hired. He did the sound. He did the music for the trailer that is on Kickstarter. Um, they want to hire him for that. They have some more art assets and they need some new software licensing and hardware they, uh, for testing. They have a very well done Kickstarter campaign page. Their anyway. Kickstarter campaign is fantastic. So if you're looking well- for an example... Check it out, because and and it's cool too. Like the um, they have a really good pie chart, and the, the audio taking up most of it. Um, right. 
it's just it feel I feel like maybe it's just me, but recently I felt like every time I look at a Kickstarter page, I have to constantly reach out to them and be like, "Hey, what's your breakdown?" Because otherwise, yeah. we're probably not going to feature it because you don't have a reputation and you don't have a breakdown, so we don't know you. Not to say that you're sleazy, but we don't know you. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. So it's 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 cool that they have all this thing already set, lots of images, lots of uh, information, very well laid out. Um, and a reasonable goal. They were asking for, um, it's, it's like twelve thousand dollars Canadian, Canadian yeah. uh, which works out to be something like nine thousand and seven dollars U.S. Nine thousand seventy-one. Uh, it says nine thousand and seven on mine. I feel like your shit's messed up because this Mine's... this happened last time we talked about a Kickstarter, and Tech and I had the same one. Uh huh. So maybe maybe I have a higher inflation rate in uh, in California. <laughs> <laughs> California's um, on their own currency now. On their own currency, right? But we they, use U.S. dollars, but slightly different. They have hit their goal. Uh, yeah, which was well done to them. Uh, they're at ten thousand five hundred twenty-one dollars as of this recording. Um, out of the nine thousand and seven dollars on their goal, um, for for my view. For my view, and they still have seven days to go as of as of recording. So yes, eight days, ten thousand three hundred and forty-two dollars now. Um, looks really cool. It was greenlit. Uh, it reached the top one hundred on Greenlight day one, and successfully was greenlit in thirteen days. Um, so yeah, it looks looks like a lot of fun. I, I can't wait. A, I can't wait to get my hands on this game, and B, I can't wait to see more out of this team. And just to give you an idea of stuff that they have available, the max that you can do is 5,000 Canadian or 3,818 US um, for the storyteller tier of uh, rewards. You get the Steam key uh, for PC, Mac, and Linux. You get your name in the credits. Uh, You get an exclusive pet. Three of them, actually. You get a pig beaver and a, and a, and a lucky dragon. Lucky dragon. <laughs> uh, you get your name on a Hall of Victors, uh, which is in the game. Uh, you get to name one of the common townsfolk. Uh, your name or phrase on a gravestone in, uh, in one of the areas in the game. You get a townsfolk that's going to be in your image. You get to design your own dungeon and design your own quest and character. So you get to have which... a lot of influence on the game, which is cool. Yeah, that could be that could be pretty good. Uh, let's see, forty six dollars U.S. Master Key Holder. This is the Pet Enthusiast tier times two. You get the Steam Key, uh, your name in the credits. You get the Pig, the Beaver, uh, and a Lucky Dragon. Um, you know, and it just kind of kind of works its way down from there. Yep. Uh, if you would like just a copy of the game, you need to pledge a approximately 23 US dollars to get two digital copies um, it, they, they say do say that the game will retail at a higher price than what is currently offered to the backers it is not multiplayer but you know uh, unless one of the multiplayer stretch goals is met I don't think that's gonna 15 uh, or 11 dollars is the minimum that you have to <clears throat> give in order to get a, a digital copy just one though so yep so yeah feel free ch- I, I i highly recommend if i wasn't broke as fuck right this moment i would be but uh the california state tax franchise board uh is currently garnishing my wages at a ridiculous amount uh um, get for so, not following taxes <laughs> yeah no i overpaid anyways anywho <laughs> uh you know what we've uh what, what we haven't done in a really long time um we we haven't gone mobile. I was going to say start an orgy, but whatever. Uh, no, it's only been a week. Going mobile. Oh. Huh? <gasps> per. I love this going mobile game. Uh, KleptoCats is this week's going mobile. Uh, It is one of those kind of clicky, time-weighty type games. Uh, I know that's 
kind of vague and, and doesn't really say it, but basically you're collecting cats. There's a hundred fucking cats that you can collect and uh, you send them on missions to collect stuff to fill your house. And you get to feed them treats, and you get to pet them, and they purr, and you can buy hats and glasses and pants and ties and all of this fun stuff for them. Uh, the sound design in this game, like, it's a very, it's a fairly straightforward, fairly simplistic game, uh, but it is adorable. I probably logged two and a half, three hours on this today, and I only stopped because my cell phone decided that it was going to lose any recognition of my SIM card, so I had to go to the store uh, to get that fixed. But uh, yeah, no, it's it, it's just a it's a collectible a collectible type paper doll dress up style game, but so cute. So it's so cute. So. Per per cuteness to to illegalness ratio, uh, would you send your cat out to steal stuff if it would do that? Oh, in a heartbeat. If my cat <laughs> if my cats were this cute and they could bring back stuff, like yeah, no, I'd I'd do that in a heartbeat. Like, hey, train you to go steal me some beer, cat. Like. <laughs> whiskey cigars like can you think of how useful it'd be to have a cat that could go steal stuff for you like what like how did i i know i'm overthinking this but i'm doing it on purpose <laughs> how would this work how would the cat not get cut like how would it not get traced back to you how what are you gonna like you're gonna blame a cat like who's gonna believe that you trained a cat actually, to go out and steal people actually i saw on the new i don't know if it was around here uh but i saw on the news that someone's cat actually does do that. Uh-huh. Uh, it goes out in the middle of the night, and like if people have toys or stuff sitting outside their house or stuff on like clothes sure. lines that are low, it'll actually take that it's, take that shit like uh, anywhere up to like ten items per night and dr- drag it back to their house. So people around the neighborhood, if shit goes missing, they know to go to that house and pick it up. It's uh, so this is actually not a such a far fetched. Uh, <laughs> concept for yeah. a game uh it's available on both ios and android um i i am playing it on android obviously but uh yeah very very cute cats i like i said i love the sound design the purr and the meow is just i it, it tugs at my little heart strings would that, you like to uh attempt a uh, an impersonation uh, no, but I could bring up the game. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Uh, you gotta get the, you work on your voice acting skills. Creature sounds are part I'm, of it. I'm, I'm not a voice actor. <sighs> well. If I was a voice actor, I would be voice acting myself. <laughs> in fact, I've had an offer to let me voice myself in an upcoming feature. What? Guess how I'm gonna sound. I'm going to sound like me. Like a male uh, version of Daria? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, they, also sell, they also sell KleptoCat plushies. Uh, I, I, do, I do want one. If somebody wants to buy me that, it's only like 25 bucks plus shipping and handling, and I will totally send you my address. Um, but yeah. It's cute. It's cute, and I want one. Shut up. I, I can't. I, I hate cats in general um, because fuck cats. I'm allergic to them. Oh, and also, I see. A- I see. Of course, it can't do without the uh, the cat related wordplay. Yeah, no. There's there there's a lot of cat related wordplay. Uh, there's also a comic that they've they've kind of done, um, which is interesting. I don't. I'm I'm just kind of clicking through it as as we're watching this right now, and I'm going. I don't I don't get it. So does it like does the time continue to increase every time you send the cat out? Uh, I don't know if it's every time or if it's in chunks. Like, of... like is there is there a paywall or? I there there are you can buy coins to uh, decrease the amount of time that it takes to right, like you get to ring a bell and that returns your cat basically instantly. The little bubble popping game that's happening on the screen. Uh, you know that that's just to pass the time. And for every ten of those, you get one coin. Hundred coins will buy a bell. You can watch an ad to get coins. You can watch an ad to get a bell. You can, yeah. Um, not too bad then. And the, it's and the not ad's not bad. like you can, buy, you can buy. Well, I mean, it's like the thirty second or thirty five second. But I mean, uh, like, like they don't shove it like here. Watch an no, ad, no. you know. 
Whoops. No, like it, it's it, it's a in that art style of the game little pop up window that shows up, you know, down near the bottom while your cat is away and says, you know, watch an advertisement. Uh, you know, it has a picture of a of a video film strip type thing, and you know, then gives you what your reward would be for it. Um, it's not super intrusive, and there's an X button right there, so you can just say fuck it, nice, and move. Good. So yeah, kind of kind of like it. Uh, well, um, I'm gonna keep playing it. I know I've got one of my roommates, uh, soon to be my other roommate as well, hooked on it. Uh, so. I think we should probably hit the X button on the show at this point. So you know what that means. It's time to be whores. Yes, uh, <laughs> I've got my fishnet stockings on and my leopard print jacket, uh, as well as my halter top. And uh, this is the end of the show. Uh, if you want to help us out um, so you don't have to watch as many ads possibly, who knows? <laughs> go ahead. Speaking of watching ads, feel free to go to our Patreon, <laughs> patreon.com slash IndieGameRiot. Support us every month uh, with a dollar or more. I suggest $5 because that's a cost of a, of a Starbucks coffee. And we know a lot of you, if not most of you, drink coffee probably every day. You probably go out and buy it and you could s- sacrifice just one of those coffees to help us out if you enjoy what we do. Uh, <laughs> and uh, other ways that you can help us by contacting us, you can do that by visiting us uh, on the live stream every Friday night at 9.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. You can just chat with us right in the stream chat area. Uh, you can also go on Twitter at IGR Podcast and Facebook.com slash IGR Podcast. And, of course, email contact at IndieGameRide.com. All this and more is on IndieGameRide.com. Last words? Uh, Indicate, Indicate, and Indicate. I can't. I, I gotta wait another year. Magfest? <laughs> Magfest? <laughs> I like that. I don't uh, like. Well, say your goodbyes, gentlemen. Have a good one, folks. Sorry, I was. I, it threw me off. I was waiting for tech. Mm-hmm. Have a good one, folks. What does he say? See you next time. Something like that. I don't remember yeah. anymore. I, I do feel like that's what tech should look like in the, uh, in ho- the anger hopefully game. in the near future. <laughs> I'm hoping. Anyway. I, anyway. Toodles. Toodles.